Hey everyone, salute to all y'all. So look, I just saw the news of ESPN laying off a bunch of people on our talent. And we're gonna read through that list right now and then I'm gonna give you my take. So this is via Front Office Sports. Steve Young, Super Bowl winner, did Monday Night Football. Jeff Van Gundy, did NBA Finals since 2017. Max Kellerman has gotten the ax. Jalen Rose has gotten the ax. Keyshawn Johnson has gotten the ax. Matt Hasselbeck, who did a lot of studio coverage for uh, NFL stuff, axed. Susie Colbert, longtime host for Monday Night Football, also had the you know famous Joe Namath drunk sloppy I just want to kiss you interview uh LaFonso Ellis he's been there a while Todd McShay esteemed NFL draft analyst Ashley Brewer left I believe it was KCAL 9 in LA to be um the heir apparent we thought when Neil Everett's contract was not renewed for uh Sports Center Los Angeles the late night Sports Center she's gone David Pollock the Georgia Bulldog He's gone. Jordan Cornette, who I worked with in Chicago, uh, gone. Jason Fitz of ESPN Radio. I'll get into that in a second. Uh, and June Lee tweeted that he is no longer with the company. I'm just making sure there are um, not any, any other ones. Uh, the Neil Everett's, the Rob Ninkovich's, the Chris Chelios's, their contracts were not renewed. Okay, so, and the Keyshawn J. Will and Mac show being axed. Not surprised in the slightest because they're making room for Pat McAfee. McAfee got an $85 million contract. It should be noted that he received less money than he got with FanDuel. However, I see the blueprint here for McAfee and whoever is the next Pat McAfee in the space, which is they are going to utilize ESPN, utilize their resources, and then when they're done, because everyone has a shelf life in this industry, clearly, they are going to get picked up by another network or simply start their own network. They want to get paid. They're probably going to have what I believe is more offloading of contracts that ESPN is going to pick up. Many of the things that they paid for, ESPN is going to pick up. And then they're going to follow the Metal Lark model. What I see here, unfortunately, is something that will never be ever again, which is TV money. Networks like ESPN, who pay top dollar, literally billions, for Monday Night Football. Sorry, the dogs are barking. Monday Night Football, the NBA Finals, tons of stuff. United States men's national team, on and on we go. They are putting those, because live sports programming is always going to take precedent over, for example, and I'm, I'm just using them as examples, um, Max Kellerman, uh, Stephen A. Smith, even uh, Neil Everett, what have you. On top of that, Bob Iger, who came back to Disney after about two and a half years of not being there, he said that they were going to slash um, essentially people from the roster. And he, I believe Disney put out a statement saying they're going to save about five and a half billion dollars since 2017. This is where we are at as an industry. It's very frustrating. Um, it's saddening. And the turn we are taking is for the worst. Sports media is evaporating before our very eyes. Essentially, what the market is saying is go out on your own. Do your own thing. Become a streamer. Become a sports host on Twitch or Kick or, you know, Facebook gaming or you know, stream yourself playing a video game and talking about sports. Like Marcellus Wiley has done it. Uh, we've seen a few others that have branched out and done it on their own. Stephen A. Smith, a long time ago, not even a long time ago, a few months ago said, you know, no one is safe and he doesn't feel safe. These are big names that are being cut. Um, I hate the way this industry is going. It's fearful. On the ESPN radio front, I am not surprised. Awful Announcing had a pretty good write-up on how millennials and Gen Z simply are not listening to sports radio anymore. However, what I will say, while that is true, Dan Lebetard had a great take how ESPN just let radio die. And they did. It's 100% true. They just let it die. If there is a pregame and a postgame, ESPN should be in local markets 
putting people on the air and having them react to what they saw. The thing is, that's now taken precedent within video format. On the radio front, let me also say this, and shout out to him. There is a TikTok user named Chilltown who goes live before the games, after the games, and that is the new form of sports radio. I, and I'll tell you right now, admittedly, I have done dishes, put in my headphones, and listened to that live stream because it's incredibly authentic. You know, the, the legend of winning, whether you love him or hate him, he is the new form of sports radio, along with many others. So, in closing, I see ESPN continually trying to fit a TV model on the internet, and it just isn't working. It continues to fall short over and over again. How do they adapt? I'm not going to tell them. That's something for Bob Iger, and if they want to call me, they can get my number. But they have to adapt, and they have to evolve, and they're just not doing it yet. The TV money, Sharon Reed put it well, the Oprah Winfrey's, they're gone. That stuff's just not going to happen anymore. Um, I have been fired before um, because of cuts. I know a ton of people who have been let go because of cuts. It's a terrible feeling. And my heart goes out to every single person that does not now. I know there are reports saying their contracts are going to be honored. Who is awaiting what that next step will be. Um, I wish you all the best. And everybody in sports media, I wish you all the best too. I clearly, clearly understand where a lot of people are coming from. And I don't know what the market is going to say in the next few years. But... Um, Salute to all y'all. Wish y'all the best.